God bless everyone out there in Radio Land. This is Prophet Craig and the prophetess herself, Karen Craig. <laughs> We're coming to you a pre-recorded podcast that we have done here. We're in Embracing Marriage. And we just thank God for the opportunity to come before you and to bring you this uh, podcast. Say hi, Karen. Hi, how y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, we're out here once again doing it. Um, doing it like we did it before, a little different. And we're just just trying to make sure that everything is okay so our cordons will come out right. So... This time, we had, uh, the last time we were together, we actually uh, talked about some things. Cut these effects off. Last time we talked about some things, we talked about uh, drifting away in marriage. That's what we talked about, not drifting. And so, I think we're going to try to stay with that particular theme, uh, if possible. We're going to try to stay with that. Um. I think kind of recap, we, we talked about different things that kind of uh, keeps us from being, um, keeps us from drifting. That that was the things that we were talking about. Um, so, on that note, <laughs> so like I say, we can in- reintroduce ourselves trying to get an idea of uh, how, uh, you know, let you know basically about ourselves, kind of making sure that everything's all right. Um, um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, like I say, I'm Barry and this is Karen, and we've been married for going on 20 years. We make 20 years this June coming. Um, we have five kids, seven grandkids, and one great grandchild. So we don't sound like we that that old. <laughs> but we, but we, yeah, things happen, and yeah, people people do their thing. So yeah, that that's pretty much how it goes. So <laughs> ain't not too much you can do about that. So I'm trying to get myself together here. All right. I'm looking at my peaks. My peaks are crazy, so that's why I'm kind of, it's sounding all different. So y'all just bear with us. So, like I said, we, we've been married for 20 years. Uh, we've been in ministry for about that long, I think been longer. Um, we actually both are from here in this area. Uh, we live out in the south part of uh, Texas. Uh, we've been you know, been in this area. We met. It's it's funny though. Kind of give since this is a and and a marriage thing. I guess you can to talk about how we met, huh? Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we can talk about that. That'll that'll feel about at least fifteen twenty minutes. That'll do it. Well, um, we actually um, met in the church where I well. Uh, well it will hit, the story actually goes kind of kind of different from different perspectives. Um, I actually met our spiritual father. I met him first. He came. I was at another church at the time, and my former pastor had had a service for our uh, for the ministers in our church. He did like a minister's appreciation. Which he was the first and the only person that I knew that ever did something like that. So he invited uh, our our uh, father ministry, Apostle McKinley August. We and uh, we he invited him at the time he was I think he was what, bishop I think at the time he was, that was a pastor. At he time. was a pastor. He was pastor. Yeah, he was pastor August at the time because lay wife was still living at the time and so they had the church they can, see one thing about cathedral praise when you invite them they come deep <laughs> so we had a small church and the church didn't hold maybe by what by maybe 50 people yeah at the most so it was about 50 people in the church and 
maybe I say maybe thirty something of them was Cathedral Praise, and the rest was New Life Christ. That's the church I was at. So, so I look, I'm looking at these people, and he preached. I mean, he preached like he always preached. You know, he preached. You know, you know, out of his heart, soul, and every way else. You know, and so when he got through, uh, he actually asked. Uh, he actually got up. Oh, okay, that's that's my problem. All right. So when he got up, sorry y'all. When he got up, uh, got through preaching, God started dealing with me about his ministry. And now, mind you, I had never met him. I think I I worked with his his his, his late wife, uh, Pastor Lily August. I worked with her a long time ago, and so. I didn't really know him. I seen him in passing. He was just it was at a somewhere and I seen him walk ran by me. That was it. And so I never really talked to him. So I so I didn't know who he was. I never met him. I knew his wife, but I never met him. So I didn't know anything about his ministry. I didn't know anything about any of them. All I knew is that they was originally under another ministry that they had, had established some ministry out in Orange, Texas. And they stayed there for a certain period of time, and then eventually came to tech, to Beaumont, where we we're at. And they've been there at that moment. I think they had been there, maybe three years at the time. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So, so we was there, uh, and he preached, and then so God started dealing with me about his ministry, and so He had given me a word to give to him, and I asked my pastor if it was okay to give him the word. And he actually, uh, I actually, he showed me his vision. And so from that point on, we had developed a relationship and I ended up working for him as a graphics designer at his radio station he owned back in the day, which was a pretty successful radio station. Uh, it just, uh, it became taxing. It was between him and the church, that and the church, he had let that go. So, but it was pretty good. It was nice. I liked it. You know, I worked you know, pretty six hour days. And so during that time, uh, I had met, I got around him. I, I think I maybe visited the church once. I don't really think I visited. I, I don't think at all. I don't really remember visiting before that, but. No, uh -uh. y'all church, I just came one time and y'all sung. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We came one time and, uh, I'm trying to get you right. I, uh, we, yeah, we came one time. He invited us to, uh, I think the pastor's son had to speak. It was a youth thing. So he, he was a minister at the time. So he came and spoke and we sung. I was over the choir and that was it. But, uh, other than that, I had no, I had never really deal with him too much. So what ended up happening, kind of was trying to make this story as short as I can because I'm trying to get to the good part. And I'll let her tell the rest because really the rest kind of hinged on her, <laughs> you know, and uh, what she, what God dealt with her. So for as me, my biggest thing was I was in a ministry that was pretty much stalemated. They pretty much had gotten to the point where they had got stuck where they were. And so God was starting to deal with me about going another direction and and I didn't want to leave the church because I love the people because the people I've been around those people, the people's like family to me. So I, I didn't really just want to just up and leave them. And so, but God was starting to deal with me about it. So what ended up happening when he came to the church, Pastor August, Bishop August at the time, uh, Pastor at the time, came to the church and preached. Like I say, he connected me with him. So my pastor had no problem with it. Uh, he understood at the time that I wanted to leave, but I left early and I went and joined the church in April 98. <laughs> no, it was April. Yeah, April 98, was it? Yeah. Yeah, April 98. Mm -hmm. So in April 98, he sent me back, told me to stay there another month and work things out with your pastor and let him know and stuff and then you, then you come. And I could say, well, I came and I joined in May of 98. And that's when I met my wife. Cause I got, like I said, I had been, I fell in love with the man. I wanted to be around him. He's like my father. He's like my natural father. And so I asked him, did he have any daughters that were single? So he mentioned about three people. There was only three at the church that weren't married. I think at the time it was the two other sisters and my wife wasn't married at the time. 
the last person he mentioned was her. He said, well, that's Sister Karen. Uh, Sister Karen got a few kids, but she she's a good girl. She can been through some things. <laughs> he had to let me know up front that she had kids. Well, you know, I was like, all right, you know. But see, what he didn't realize is that before all this happened, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you all these couples. I'm going to tell you single people something, okay? Before I met my wife, I actually prayed for her. I had actually got to the point where I said, Lord, because I had been in relationships in the past that were superficial. They, they were, they, there was, it was all about flesh. It was all about looks. It was all about how they, you know, it was looking out. They, they were trophies. They were, they were arm pieces. They were trophies. They were, they weren't relationships. Some of them weren't even mine. You know, I was just in a relationship. You know, I was a side dude for like three years. And then I was in another one that she was, cheating on me and another dude you know it was stupid stuff but i wasn't in a true honest to god relationship and i told god that i did not and then i then i went on the other side and i got in church and then i met these church girls quote unquote that would sleep with you quicker than the women in the street so let me tell you something if you're single and you're in the church and you living all you could for god and i know you didn't heard this cliche before and telling you it pays to wait and yes. let God choose the person for you. Because if you go out there and choose them, you're going to choose the same thing that you chose when you was in the world. Because yes. you're going to run into that same type of person in the church. I guarantee you the same kind of woman I ran into when I was out in the street, I ran into in the church. Yes. Same type. Only thing is they had a religious uh, coat on. It's the same spirit, different skin. That's it. Because they got a lot of people in the church that have messed us up so bad that we just, we live these double lives. We are okay on Sunday. We're all right. We're religious and we're, we're, we're shouting and we're worshiping and we're those prostrate before the Lord. And then soon as we hit the door, we either light the cigarette, we get the, get the beer, we setting up a date. We doing all this stuff because we have no commitment to God. Right. And so this is the thing that happens that you meet the, because these spirits are going to connect. You're going to connect to a person that's just, that has that type of spirit. So when you connect to that type of person, guess what? You're going to meet the same kind of person. If you haven't really got delivered from that lust spirit, guess what? You're going to meet another person in the church with the same spirit. So true. And so what we have to do is make sure that we're in the right place. And that's what I did. I focused on God and focused on just being in the church. My thing was I was trying to find a place to go. I wasn't looking for a wife at the time, but I did pray for one. And what I ended up doing is I prayed for a certain type of woman. And I prayed for a certain characteristics. And I said there were certain concessions I was willing to make because of the fact that I was in the church. And uh, because I because I wanted I wanted a wife. I didn't want no girlfriend. You know. Now, if you want a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend, that's different. Yeah, they come a dime a dozen. Yeah, you can get one anytime. So you know, <laughs> and you don't even have to work hard for a girlfriend or boyfriend. But we won't like talk about that often. About relationships and about how that there are different levels of relationships. So, so like I said. I met, and this is the part where you I have to let her talk because God started really dealing with her about about me and about a husband because she got different words and she can tell you better about that. You know, tell them basically, yeah. you know, what God uh, had done. What the prophecy that I had received uh. um, concerning my husband was um, that the, uh, God had called us to uh, do a work. That was the word I got before we even met. That God had called us to do a work mm -hmm. for Him together. And I, when even when I was single, I would always pray for my husband and and certain things that I wanted, uh, certain qualifications I wanted. Um, I had five children, so I asked the Lord. I said, "Well, I wanted Him to love me and my kids as." Uh, like he was the like uh like he was the father and I wanted him to love me. Uh and I wanted him to love God more than he loved me. I wanted him to love God first, then me. I wanted a God fearing man. Uh -huh. So there's certain qualifications that I wanted in a husband. So uh so how God um 
Because you always tell people, say, well, how uh, do you know that that's your husband and that God saw them? Mm-hmm. Well, how it happened for me was he confirmed it. Uh, and I also, you know, I did a lot of praying. <laughs> and I think Bishop August at the time, he was doing a um, revival at, uh, she's Apostle Jenny Morris Church. Mm-hmm. And, and I think one time I asked Bishop August, we all asked, and he said, your spirit is going to connect. And I think he was, at the time I was his nurse and I was holding the oil, he was doing the prayer line. And my, let, let me, I'm going to cut you up. Let me define what a nurse is. Because a lot of people hear nurse and they think, you know, doctor, yeah. you know, no. a nurse in the church there, they, that was a, uh, the, uh, terminology used for nurses basically what you would compare to a person who's attendant they basically was a, a combination be of a uh an attendant somebody that kind of keeps the person uh people in the church know them as armor bearers and some of them they call them nurses they're more like attendants they attend to that pastor they attend to that leader or the pastor and his wife they kind of make sure they have everything and make sure that they're pretty much taken care of uh and that's basically what they want more so. And they, they accompany them when they minister to the people. They, she's out in the forefront with him. So when he's praying for people, she like right there. And at the time, we didn't have cordless mics. So she held the cord. She held the anointing oil that he had. So she basically took, had his towel. So she was like right there with him during the time. So just kind of give him an mm-hmm. idea. Yeah, that, that is exactly what I did. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, um, my husband, uh, he was standing behind me, and I kept feeling this. Um, it was like a, I would always always say like a force, like a magnet. Mm-hmm. And I had this strange look. I say, you know, God, what is going on? What is happening? I'm standing in the front of this church trying to smile with this strange feeling going on behind me. And when I come to realize that God was confirming uh, what Bishop Walker said, he said that your spirit was going to connect. And I was like, okay, so, um, and I went home, uh, I went home at night and I prayed and I said, well, Lord, if this is my husband, then, um, I said, all I want him to do is to love you and to love me. So I think maybe shortly after that, he, uh, well, I had got another, uh, word also when I was single, uh, by Pastor, uh, Mac Hawthorne, he was telling me my reaction, what it was going to be and uh, when I would meet my husband. So God was giving me all kinds of signs yeah. that I would know that this is him and yeah. that this is God. And I said, well, he said, well, when you see your husband, he said, you're going to have a look like a surprise. You're going to have that job. How you walk into a surprise party, how you get that jump. Yeah. Like when you walk in the door. So, and I went to church uh, I'm just making it short. It is a little longer than this. Yeah. And uh, so I went to church this Sunday, and uh, and normally I go through the back. So so it happened. I went through the front door, and he was standing up against the wall. And when I seen him, I was like, <gasps> you know, I had that reaction like like they said it was you know like a surprise. Well, he didn't know that God had dealt with me about it. Yeah. I didn't even share it with anybody. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't go up to him like a lot of people do when God reveal to you and show you, show you that this is your spouse. Oh yeah. I didn't go was... up to him cause they had it bad. Yeah. They had uh, it real bad. It was horrible. <laughs> you know, God will show you your mate, but you have to give him time to deal with that person. That's right. That's... And if God had dealt with that person yet, you're going to mess it up. Mm-hmm. Cause Good the time. first thing they're going to tell you, well, God ain't show me that God ain't tell me that. Mm-hmm. And God probably had told that person that, that this is your spouse. But if you have to, be patient enough to let the Lord deal with that person. Yeah. Because you would chase them off. Yeah. Fast. They're going to think you're weird. You're gonna, they're going to think you're desperate or you just want a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. So I just had to let the Lord deal with him and show him uh, his own self. So I just stayed prayerful. And, and you know, Lord, he, he brought it. He brought us together. Um, he uh, come up to me and uh, he would uh, get, greet me and say nice things to me and uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna say all that but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, he would well, say nice the, things to me and um, well the biggest thing was um, 
my biggest thing when after that because that you have to understand that was like yeah. a week long yeah. period mm -hmm. and so i think the day actually that we actually talked we didn't talk yeah. like two three days after the fact we had a common friend sister michelle bless her heart she was trying to find out whether or not yeah. i had communicated with her Mm -hmm. And uh, she approached me because see, I had to understand when I came to that church, I was a mess and I wasn't approachable at all. So she approached me and I kind of was sarcastic with her. And so when she told me, uh, when she told me that she was trying to find out about, you know, later on, she told me that she was basically trying to see if I talked to her because I didn't actually at the time I wasn't looking for anybody. I was just basically trying to find another place to go. And God was using that as a catalyst to get me to the same church that my wife was so I could be in the same house. So <clears throat> what ended up happening, when I joined the church, uh, they had already had a couple of sisters that already had, pay, made, you know, made had, their claims. Yeah, they made their claims, stated their claims, and had dibs on me already. I had a sister, and I told my wife about that. This sister, she don't even go to church no more. She come up to me after a, a message, I think I preached or something one time. And she asked me, did I have anything that I need to tell her? I said, well, not that I can think of, no. <laughs> and I actually did not. It's, what it was is she was one of those ones. And I was like, you know what? Come on, man. And that's what I'm telling you. If, like she, my wife just said, if you know God is dealing with you about a person, pray. Let that person, God, let God deal with that person. Don't go, go and mess that up. Because you can really chase a person off doing that. And we had a lady, she did that. She would take claim, and she actually, <laughs> one time, <laughs> we're not going we to mention her name, but that because we don't know who's going to listen to this. But I would tell you like this. It was Sister the Church. She actually had gotten deals on thought I was, because I complimented her. I mean, she had a nice hairdo, and I complimented her something. I don't know. And granted, the woman wasn't all that great looking but still hair was nice at the time she had she has nice hair so she does she, you know this is, does have wave she has natural wave hair so she had to fix a certain way and i come so she got a nice hair now that, that dude you know when well, she thought that i wanted her, she come walked up to my wife because they was close at the time and she said you know that new brother <laughs> I was a new brother. I ain't have a name. My name was New Brother. <laughs> I think he kind of liked me a little bit. That's what she told her. Yeah. And uh, my wife ain't making no better. She was like, mm, good, go. Oh, it might be so. <laughs> yeah, not knowing that God didn't already had yeah. showed me uh, yeah. that, that he was going to be my husband. Yeah, she had already, so, God had already dealt with me. Uh, dealt with her and yeah. he didn't deal with me but he did kind of shake me and said look I'm trying to bless you and trying to answer your prayer pay attention mm -hmm. so I said okay so what ended up happening we had this Bible study like he was telling that dad was doing they was trying to go through the Bible I think we made the Leviticus and stopped mm -hmm. so we, we was in uh, think Genesis at the time we were studying the Bible we was about like a bunch of commentators and theologians trying to argue this stuff out well it was pretty good because everybody's views and we was trying to figure out, you know, where came wife come from, and and uh, trying there was uh, the time of the flood and Noah, and uh, we was trying to really hash this stuff out. So we had to work in groups. So they knew I knew the word and stuff like that. And so my wife, that was an opportunity for her to try to see, you know, if she can get me to come on. <laughs> so, so no, I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but because uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I did. I talk. I yeah. wouldn't talk because at the time. Well, I had found out that um, because I really didn't know he had uh, he, like I say, God had showed me he hadn't dealt with him yet. No, and then and, I had a female friend at the time. Yeah, so um, yeah, and I didn't know that he even went and talked to the pastor about mm -hmm. you know the uh, anything. I didn't know uh, my good friend. She had come. She mm -hmm. told made mention. And I was like, well, she said, well, did he come in? Uh, did he call you? Or did he ask? Did he talk to you? I was like, no. Because mm. she was telling me, girl, you know, uh, she was telling me somebody had like me in the church. I'm like, well, who? who? You going to find out? She never would tell me who. <laughs> you going to find out? I said, well, okay. Yeah, dad had told her. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I said, well, okay. But, uh, so then she finally got, so she finally had told me who it was. So every day she would call me and ask me, well, did he call you? Did mm. he? I say, no. <laughs> he didn't. I say, uh, I so eventually, that's when what my husband is talking about now. Yeah. 
I think I was doing my, uh, I was doing my lesson. Yeah. And I got stuck. I could not figure that out, and I couldn't uh, for nothing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I knew he he knew the uh, he knew the, the the word of God. So it was just um, and like I said, I wasn't thinking about us, you know, connecting or hooking. I just thought at the time, like I said, I would come to realize, well, okay, what was God designed? And mm -hmm. oh. And, that's that's our nexus, y'all. Y'all forget. And um, <laughs> so at the you know at the time I knew you know he knew the word of God and um, so I said well I just I just see you know if he can help me out and basically that's all my plan. It wasn't for us to hook up. It wasn't for us to get now, together see, or uh, nothing. I just wanted to. I was just stuck. So but I said, see, that was I was that was our that was your plan, our plan, mm -hmm. but God used that as a catalyst. To mm -hmm. get us together, because if you think about it, I think if it would what wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have had the desire to say, "Hey, I'm gonna call him," because mm -hmm. you could have called anybody else. <laughs> and for some reason, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I just know me, it was yeah. like, yeah, and it was like God had just laid it on my heart to call just call me, him, yeah. ask him, and uh, well, no, because at the time everybody was, yeah, I think they was at work, yeah, yeah, pretty much everybody was at at work, and uh, yeah, I think it was, but it was that evening because I worked till like. Evening, so yeah. it was kind of that evening. Yeah, and it was getting close time. I say, okay, just almost time. Oh, but church. we gotta tell, you gotta finish that. Cause see, also during that time, there was another lady in the office I worked with that liked me, and she was trying her best yeah. to not to let my wife talk. tell tell her yeah, about that. Yeah, this one. one we're not gonna call her name, no, but when I called and I and I had asked to speak to mm -hmm. uh, my husband well, at the time, I think they was calling them. Uh, Prophet. That was, was Prophet Craig. He yeah. was Prophet Craig, and I, yeah. uh, and so she was just probing and pegging and probing and pegging, and uh, she said, "Well, anything I can help you with?" I say, "No." I say, "May I speak to Prophet Craig?" I mean, cause she just, like, she just refused to put him on the phone. I was mm -hmm. like, "Well," so eventually after she would her, you know, uh, thinking she can assist or help, you know, I never <laughs> did tell her what I wanted. No, so she never said yeah, anything. So she, uh, so she finally put him on the phone, and um. Well, of course, you know, he did. He helped me with the answers and the questions that, you know, and so I, I, so I finished my question and answers for the test. Well, of course, <laughs> I did not know at the time I say, okay, he, so that's when he started, you know, inquiring about me and asking me questions about me. I felt like I was on a interview. <laughs> she was. He was an interview. I say, oh my God. I yeah, mean, I, I, I do. Actually, the first thing I asked her was, I asked her to tell me her testimony. Tell me how she got saved. And uh, she told me about her testimony, how she got saved. And funny though it seemed, her testimony was similar. And look at now, you see, y'all probably was, uh, was, if you've been on our podcast, which is on, on Embrace Marriage, at podbean dot, dot podbean dot com. If you've seen a picture of us, you see this beautiful woman sitting here. You don't know this beautiful woman was 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 from them streets. <laughs> yes, yeah, I was. she she was from them streets, and I, we both were really. I was out there, and uh, you know, I ran. She 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 ran some tough customers. We both did, so we knew about street street how street think. So we knew how to deal with that. So we do we know how to do it now. But what you tell me a testimony it was so similar to our to mine and it was like it was it was it was crazy how it sounded to me because I was like it was like I was it was a female version of myself, you know. So then I began to ask about her and about her family and, and all kinds of stuff. I mean I, I don't remember it was a bunch of questions. You're right. She I questioned you a lot. <laughs> Yes, I say, oh my God! I mean, it was like he had a list of a hundred <laughs> questions, and I mean, it was like, but it was a it, lot. It felt like a hundred questions. I mean, it was like back to back, mm -hmm. and I was like, she answered them all though. I yeah. mean, she she patiently answered them all. She did, and then we began to talk, and and I think we ended up starting to do well. Like I say, at the time I wasn't working; I was working basically for a little bit of nothing. I was living with mom at the time, and my, when she was by herself, she was staying in the housing complex, which I didn't know till later on. She was with her kids and stuff, and kids were teenagers and preteens at the time. And so, I um, so we all could see each other when I could get, and I would sometimes I would go take the bus because she lived across town from where I live. 
and I'll take the bus across town. I stay as long as the bus is going. I take mm-hmm. the last bus home because the bus used to stop running at a certain time. It's six o'clock. Uh, yeah, it's six uh, o'clock. So, and I think the yeah the first time he had he had came over. So, um, like I always say, you know, I and I I always go back and I look, you know, because he asked me, can he come over? And I said, well, yeah, you can. So, and I was wondering. I say, well, he told me that he had walked. Yeah. To come in. To come see me, mm-hmm. and I was like, he lived way yeah. across town. I mean, yeah, I, li- I live on the, on other, the end. other end of town. I mean, he was <laughs> like, I was lived in the north end. You know, for those of y'all from Beaumont, mm-hmm. and he lived in the Pale Arch. Yeah, and we- I was like, that was far to come. You know, to come walk to see a woman. Yeah, you know, I was like, well, when he told me, I was like, wow, <laughs> I was like, well, you didn't have, you know, I was telling him, you don't have to. You didn't have to come, you know, walk out, you know. And he did. He walked to uh, to I come mean, and see me. Yeah, I was broke. I had no bus fast, so I had to get there some kind of way. And I walked pretty quick. So was, yeah, I mean, he made it I there. I was there. like. Yeah. I got off the phone with her, and I think within about an hour and a half, I was there. Because I, I was yeah. like, I walked pretty fast. And then on top of that, I my brother kind of taught me how to walk the track. So basically, I walked the track. And that track could take you straight through. There's a track that runs through our city. It runs straight through the city. So if you take that track, it'll take you straight through the city into the next area. So I walked from where I was straight up the track, and I was in the north end at no time. So um, all I had to do is get off track, come down, and walk down her street. And so, and like I said, she lived in, and she lived in projects. I live far. She lived. Far, she she, far. she ain't lived just far. She lived far. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I, 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 she was worth that, and so I, and I had to show her that she, she was that valuable for me to be with her. But so, shorten this all up because we getting in a, ooh, Lord, we getting in a long time. But listen, we ended up, ga- we ended up being engaged. I, I asked her to marry me in May, uh, and because we in, and we met each other in April and, and we got engaged in May, I asked her to marry me in May. So it was, we were knowing each other at least a month. And we talked every day for that whole time, hours at a time. Yeah, so it I wasn't mean, like we was just a, you know a few times out the, out the week. No, we talked. We talked every, every day. day. I mean, we'd be on the phone like all day, yeah, all night. We would fall asleep. It'd be like one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be holding the phone. He'd be holding the phone. We'd be yeah. talking, and I'd be like, "You still there?" And then yeah. he'd wake up. He's like, "Yeah, you." Yeah. I say, "But no." <laughs> and we, so we and we'd be holding the phone. So you know, it just goes to show I, you, you know. Yeah. When you, when you first meet, you know, how you just don't want to hang up and you run out of words and say, no, no, we both nodding on the phone. We I both nodding, yeah. We both sitting <laughs> there yeah, till snoring we come, and yeah, stuff. Come, <laughs> we come out and say, okay, we need to get on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> neither one of us had a job, so we was good. <laughs> she was, on, she was yeah. on housing and stuff, and I was not... I was working my work. I went in 10, so it was, it was good, so I didn't have to be tired. Yeah. But they... It was interesting though, but the funny thing about when we got married, we didn't. We had to. My late sister in law, she gave boy loaned us money to get a lavish license because we did not have. I didn't have a job before I got married, and so she loaned us some money. We got a marriage license. We got married in our pastor's office yeah. with about six people there. Mm-hmm. I think it was her friend Gail. Yeah. Uh. Uh pastor who's now Pastor Garcia and his his former wife, they were there, her friend Michelle, and Pastor and his late wife. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and me. And that was that was that was it. We was in we was she was in a nice dress. I was in a nice suit. We changed rings that weren't ours because we had no rings. And we ain't just now getting rings. So we never had rings. So we had scanned their rings. They used one we used their rings to, for the wedding. And it was something. We got married in the office on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. We went in unmarried and come out married. And boy, you should look seen the faces of the people. <laughs> Especially <laughs> chicks. Oh man. They was like they were looking at it. they could if they could have threw rocks, they would have did it. And I mean it was it was that bad. But they asked a lot of people happy for us and so here we are twenty years later and I tell people that, that we was only engaged ninety days. People freaks out and I'm saying we begin to two, twenty years, but I'm telling you, because we're going to continue this 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 episode, we're going to bring it down to a close. But I'm, we're going to tell you about our stages and and how we went through and how we dealt with our kids. We're going to help you with some of this stuff because 
we became a blended family. I was a man, no kids, coming into a marriage with a woman with kids, and we got to deal with that because a lot of people are in that situation now, and we can help you how we can how we dealt with it and how God brought us through it. But like I said, once again, uh, this is embracing marriage with Barry and Karen, and oh, that sounds good. We're gonna do that. Embrace marriage with Barry and Karen, <laughs> and. Um, you can check us out on Facebook at Embracing uh, Marriage, Embrace Marriage, Dare to Be Different. Uh, you can check us out. Uh, we're on, I think we're on Google Plus, Embracing Marriage Ministries. We're also on YouTube as Embracing Marriage Ministries. We're also on Periscope. Check us out on Periscope at Embrace Marriage, uh, Embrace 5. That's where we're at in Periscope. We do one at least a week. Uh, so you can check us out there. Check us out on Podbean also. That's where this podcast is going. It's going to embracemarriage.podbean.com. And we are out, and we'll be talking to you soon. God bless you, and have a good night.